Good morning and welcome to the show. My name is Koi. Now this week has been filled with a number of regimes that can help you get rid of the holiday excesses that we accumulated. Now today we're going to get back in shape using a combination of dance and music. Capoeira contributes to physical fitness by being physically challenging. Now since students of the martial art dance never stop moving at any point, Capoeira is considered a cardiovascular workout. The movements which include kicks, cartwheels and flips build strength, control and coordination. Let's check it out up next on Mid Morning Lifestyle. the dance of war. That's how I describe capoeira, this very interesting Brazilian art form we stumbled upon right here in Nairobi. But that's just me, the experts have their own and I'm pretty sure correct description. Capoeira has got a few meanings, you know, from the history of the art. Um, one of the meanings is tall grass, okay? tall grass, you know, it has connotations of people hiding in the tall grass as they escaped from the plantations, you know, and made their way to what we call quilombos, which are uh, slave get up, sort of hideouts, as it were. A dance that derives its beauty from the skill of fighting, an art. It's, uh, it's a mixture of a few things. I think it all becomes an art form with the assistance of music. Okay, when there's no music, there's no capoeira. Judging from the music sang and played here, its roots are in the Brazilian culture. The words all in Portuguese, and so are the dance moves. Its focus is conversation through the body, expressions. And you can tell from some of the techniques, this one jinga, which is basically rocking back and forth. Negativa, going low on the ground like this. And the ao. Capoeira for cartwheel. You know all the things that you weren't taught in school about um, African history. Okay, this is what that is to a modern-day Kenyan. Okay, it's more. It's a learning. It's a learning process. And sort of figuring out, like, wow. So we have art. You know, we have our own thing, and it's not contemporary. It's, that's what that is. <laughs> Its expression, however, cannot be boxed into any culture. That's why these Africans, Kenyans, can express themselves through it. Capoeira is, um, is ultimately quite a strong form of self-expression. So you don't need to Kenyanize it, you don't need to make it British, you don't need to make it American. It's, it's, it's about you. Music and the musical instruments that accompany the art form, borrowed and returned, so to speak. The birimbao, agogo, African instruments, taken to Brazil and now back in Africa. They come from Africa, essentially, okay, and like they manifested themselves into what they are today in Brazil. The songs sang during and as part of the art form often tell a story. Stories of the sea, of life, more expressions, conversations of the body, this time of the throat and voice. In its purest form, it's dance, or should I say fought in a circle, to sustain the energy of the dance. It is said by those who practice it that capoeira goes beyond dance, beyond art, it is a philosophy. It's kind of how you choose to live your life. How you choose to live your life is kind of how you express yourself in capoeira and how you ultimately learn how to evolve. Capoeira, the art, ritual and philosophy to a dance of war.
Helen Keller couldn't have said it better when she stated that alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. Coming together under one roof to get inspired by various inspirational women across the country and beyond is what the Eve sisters do. So let's hear what's in store for us today. Kenya has been blessed. We've always been the hub of this region. We were blessed by having a naturally opportune geographical location. And it is our job to leverage that. Our geographical location, our naturally granted, God-gifted geographical location is wealth. But we have to leverage it. We have to do our part to make sure that we turn that particular gift into something that works for Kenya. Recently, you're all aware that we hit black gold. And very soon, we are waiting and expecting confirmation of commercial, uh, commercial viability of the Ngamia oil well. And beyond that, we fully expect that we shall have oil offshore. We've recently discovered lots of gold in this country. Rare earth. I don't know how many of you have heard of rare earth. The mineral called rare earth. I don't know how many of you know what this is made of. The material that coats this. There is titanium in here. You know what's in Kuala? Lots of titanium. There is rare earth in these gadgets. And we may have some of the largest reserves of rare earth right here in Kenya. All that is what Donald Kaberuka calls inherited wealth. The challenge will be to convert inherited wealth into real wealth. Real, sustainable wealth. And we have what it takes because we have something wealth-wise much more valuable than any gold or oil or rare earth. And that's you and me. The human resource capacity that has propelled Kenya from where it was to where it is today. Over the years, even as we've been beating ourselves up, we have retained an advantage in terms of human capacity. And you cannot say that that is colonial heritage. Because I wonder how many of you in this room were born in 1963. Many of you went through the education system of an independent Kenya. And you're now among the best in Africa and in the world. But even that wealth is inherited in my view. And it can go to waste. It can go to waste if we have the wrong mindset and the wrong value system. It can go to waste if we keep saying the glass is half empty as opposed to a glass that is half full. I started by saying that we have a vision 2030 whose objective is to transform this country from a third world nation into a developed nation, a prosperous nation, one in which all have a high quality of life. But we may need, or rather we will need to cast away our third world, third class mentality to do that. Because a third world, third class mentality is wasting our great human capacity, which we have. You know, when uh, I remember when, when, when the Museum Hill Roundabout was coming up, even as the pillars were coming up, we had doubters. People would say, you mean, you are serious? You're actually going to no." Even as the pillars were coming up, there were doubters. Why? Why? When we look at Thicka Road today, there's been articles about the way Thicka Road is killing people. And the question I always ask is, is Thicka Road killing anyone? No. Human beings are killing each other. 
Whichever way you look at it, whether it is the contractor not having adequate road signage, whether it is the policemen who still think that on a four-lane highway you can have those little spikes on an expressway, whether it is the way we drive or Matadu drivers drive, whether it is the pedestrians, you name it. It is not thicker road. It is a third world mentality. We need fast class mentality for a fast class system. Fast class infrastructure must go with a fast class mentality. And so all I want to ask of us today, and all I want us to pray for today, Dr. Cindy Trin, is a mindset change, value systems. We need to look at our value systems and in fact, as we embark on the second medium-term plan, because we're just about to complete the first five-year medium-term plan of Vision 2030, and we're reviewing it now to go to the second medium-term plan that begins next year, we are going to entrench a value systems approach to Vision 2030. And in fact, what we call the foundations today, which is infrastructure and macroeconomic, uh, macroeconomic stability and innovation, and public sector reforms will have an additional foundation, the foundation of foundation, which is going to be value systems. And you have a role to play in that. Because value systems are not like changing a constitution or building a road. They are so that is software. They are more organic. Role modeling is very important. Oftentimes, I drive behind big cars, big cars, you know, Range Rovers and Mercedes Benzes, and there's a father and a mother and three kids at the back. Hmm? Or should I say 2.3 kids at the back? Increasingly, we are moving from 11 kids, like my parents had, each of them had 11 siblings, to really up it, up class, upper class 2.3 kids. But in this car, in this car, flashy car with a very yappy, hip, upwardly mobile couple, and there are 2.3 kids, you know, just as I'm really admiring them. Window rolls down, and daddy throws out an empty bottle of water or yogurt. I'm sure you've seen that happen. I wonder whether some of you are that daddy or mommy. But what value system is that being imparted to those 2.3 kids? You know, we've been talking about a new constitution and a new judiciary, for instance, or IEBC. Institutional reform. Institutional reform is hardware. It cannot work without software reform, without the value systems change. And already I can see signs of it. If you look at the IEBC, who are also proud of the independent, interim independent electoral commission at the, at the time of the constitutional referendum. We've been very proud of the IEBC, haven't we? But as soon as they announced the 4th of March date, suddenly, this credible institution began becoming less credible. Why? Not because of them. Because it doesn't matter what kind of a constitution we have, what kind of institutions we have. We must ourselves protect them and respect them by having the right mindset and value system, which means the judiciary, if we believe it is credible, is still credible when I lose a judgment. It cannot be that the IEBC is only credible if they choose the election date that I favor. It cannot be that the judiciary is credible if they only make judgments for me. Mindset change. Actually, and if we get it right, if we get the mindset change right, if we get the value systems change right, Vision 2030 will move from being targeting an upper middle income country to actually getting a fully developed high income nation. That is the trick actually. That is the only challenge I see to Vision 2030 if you ask me. I see no other challenge. We've got great engineers and doctors and teachers. We can put up great roads and buildings. We've got great judges coming up. But we need to make a decision that we actually want to do the right thing. We want to apply ourselves. 
And only then shall you be able to convert that inherited wealth that's underground, that is within us, the education that we have, into real wealth that is sustainable for posterity. I believe we shall do it. I really believe we shall. I work for it every day. I pray for it every day. And every day we're getting a critical mass that is growing and moving towards that direction. And I'm sure that is why you're all here today. Because you're part of that critical mass. Throughout the week, we've given you plenty of ideas on how to get rid of holiday toxins, get that glowing skin, and just get back in shape ready for our daily routines after the holidays. Midmorning at standardmedia.co.ke is our email address. Don't forget to check out our Facebook page. It's called KTM Midmorning. If you enjoy the show, then be sure to like the page. Have a great weekend. Let's meet on Monday.